console side. And iRacing has decided that they are not going to be doing that um, anymore, which I kind of agree with. Hmm. But <clears throat> excuse me. But they um, they are they've decided that I, I guess they decided maybe it was too long because it was like all 36 races. Um, but uh, I, it's going back to the Class A. Uh, series open, which is the one that goes every 12 weeks um, that we're all really accustomed to. Right, yeah, just um, the regular stuff. Yeah, just just the regular series kind of thing there. Um, and it appears that it will be a Class A oval license with a minimum of 3.00 safety rating. Uh, top 10 points finishers in the Season 1 and Season 2 NASCAR Class A series, the open setup, that are not already pro, uh, will be considered for a pro license. The bottom 30 from the 2015 World Championship Series uh, will earn a pro license, and of course, roughly 50 pro license drivers will be the number for the pro series uh, when that starts up. So, uh, we thought that was pretty interesting and wanted to announce that. So, if you're one of those people who are making 2015 all about going for pro, <laughs> well, then you've got some catching up series. to do. You've got some catching yeah. up to do because you've already missed some weeks. Yeah. And don't go in the wrong series. <laughs> yes, it wasn't. It, it, it's. I guess it's now breaking now because they did announce it last year when the season was uh, beginning. But it's actually something that I just noticed uh, for other reasons because I was looking at something else and noticed that. So I figured, hey, we we didn't bring, we didn't mention it when it happened, so we should probably mention it now, even though it's a few weeks late. But I'm one of those people who did not know. So. So anyway. Um, as part of that, uh, well, not really part of that, but the, uh, hmm, well, I thought your hor your segue was horrible. Guess mine's worse. Also, well, they, as part of that, uh, uh, <laughs> as part of that, here's something that's not part of that. Uh, the uh, we haven't had any really big um, endurance racing stuff. I mean, there's been some hosted stuff, and there's been, you know, they've done some small stuff with the uh, uh, the, or the official series uh, with the team racing, and they uh, did, you know, a few things during week 13 and whatnot. Uh, it looks like they are, they feel confident enough that they're ready to go forward with the... Uh, you know, the real like, to do it for real, man. They're gonna they're gonna give it a good shot here, and that feeds into the Road Warrior series. And if you're not familiar with that, that's kind of a uh, a long during the entire year series where they uh, uh, they have special road racing events uh, throughout the year, uh, such as you know the Daytona 2400 and uh, you know the Spa Grand Prix and a few other things and. Uh, uh, so they wanted to really get the endurance racing ready for that. So the uh, 24 Hours of Daytona is coming up, and the race fans uh, know that that is approaching not too, too far into the future. And, of course, iRacing is going to have their version of it that used to be the Daytona 2.4. Well, now it's going to be the Daytona 24 Hour, which is going to be amazing. But in order to prepare themselves for that, they have decided to do a preseason test because it'll be their first big event of that length. So uh, they say set for 17th, 18th of January. Uh, and that is, of course, the Saturday, Sunday, uh, a week and a half from now. So they are going to do a basically a test run. Uh, typically, they've done a roar before the 24, which is... Um, you know, a shorter race with different cars and whatnot, but uh, they're using that spot to basically run a test 24-hour race uh, to say, hey, everybody come in. It's not part of the points, but it is an official, uh, I think it's an official race, did they say? Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an official race. Okay, but it's not the actual, uh, it's not going to count towards points in the Road Warrior series. So it's right. basically a, all right. We have, in a couple weeks from here, from this point in time, we have the actual Daytona 24, uh, 24 hour. That's going to be our first 24 hour race. Let's do it for practices. So 17th of 18th, you can jump on and uh, compete in iRacing's official first 24 hour race, even though it's going to be just a test race. So that is coming up on the 17th and 18th of this month. So next weekend, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and that should start at 8 a.m. Eastern time on the Saturday if they hold true to uh, the time they're going to be doing for the rest of the series, and I can't see why they would do otherwise. 
Yeah. So, so if you're ready to get your endurance on, your team racing on, and you say, hey, you know what? What would be fun would be race the same car and, uh, you know, all the smelliness and sweatiness of it all without actually having to sit in any peop- anybody else's seat, then this race is for you. And uh, I understand that uh, we, you uh, fans may know some people who may or may not be in that event, so that'll be kind of cool, too. Hint, hint. Do? Who, who do we know? I don't know. John Hensley. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to race the entire 24 hours on his own. He said so. Hey, there we go. Way to, way to go, John. <laughs> uh, yes, I am looking forward to that. That's all I'll say. Um, now, I racing just yesterday... Uh, picked up a new laser scanner, uh, and in case any of you don't know, uh, if you're not uh, currently a member of iRacing, iRacing does laser scan all of their tracks and cars uh, to get them into the sim, which is pretty neat, and it helps them be- get pretty darn accurate with uh, each thing. So, um, iRacing uh, had a pretty good scanner, but it I don't think that it died necessarily. I think that they just wanted to upgrade it. Uh, to a better and faster one. Well, so they I mean, have done that. I, I was going to say they've been doing this for like six years. So, I mean, yeah. at some point in time you say, hey, technology's advanced. Let's make it gooder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, the first the scanner that they used to have, it was nicknamed Muffins. It's kind of the interest, interesting Do we know name. why? I haven't watched I, the video I, yet, so... <laughs> They didn't announce why, uh, but the funny thing at the end of the video, and we're, we'll put up the video in the show notes so that you guys can hear them. Sorry, funny, I, funny joke between Trevor and I. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, <laughs> Did it happen again? Uh, kind of. And anyways, um, but at the very end of the video, they have a little coffin with the laser scanner in it, and it says "R.I.P. Muffins." So, and then they play like some sad music. Uh, oh. Which I thought was kind of funny, but yet sad. Poor muffins. Yeah, poor muffins. Uh, I don't think that they've nicknamed the new scanner. Um, and I nominate hopefully... cupcake. <laughs> uh, scrambled eggs. Uh, anyways, so just wanted to uh, announce that, and like I said, we'll put it in the show notes. It's pretty neat. They kind of give you an overview of what the new scanner can do and how it's better. Um, it is faster. It does things a lot quicker, and. Uh, one of the things that I that I was in watching the video, they said that right now, a typical car scan takes about six hours, and they believe with this new scan uh, scanner equipment that they should be able to do it in about three hours. So it sounds like it's really going to cut you know a lot of their time in half on a lot of different projects. So uh, I'm all for it if it's going to help uh, make things go faster and and get it out on the sim for us. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to scanning a a vehicle, a three-hour to a six-hour difference probably isn't significant in cutting down on time and how how quickly they can get out content. But you consider, you know, scanning a a two-and-a-half-mile road course, I bet you that makes a significant difference in how quickly they can do that. So Yeah. Yeah, and they've already put it to use, by the way. Oh, because okay. um, again, I, yeah. I just saw the video before we started, or I, that it was there, so I haven't actually had a chance to see it yet. Well, uh, another uh, special news announcement that we can make um, that was actually mentioned in the Road Warriors post. Oh, yes, I know where you're going with this. Yes, that uh, was kind of one of those sneaky ones, you know, mm-hmm. where they just kind of throw it in there and hope everybody sees it. And obviously, <laughs> a lot of the people on iRacing are pretty smart to catch stuff like this. Um but they are scanning the new Chevy Silverado. Uh, of course, the truck uh, on iRacing, which currently we just only have the Chevy Silverado, and it's the one from, like, years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and the new one is obviously a much different body style, but they're also scanning the Toyota Tundra, uh, which would be a new addition to the truck series. They are not doing the Ford because um, I think only, like, three or four trucks in the truck series are Fords uh, because it's primarily a Chevy Toyota dominated series and I'm not even sure if those people that run the Ford are backed up by Ford to be honest I I think they might just be running it to run it you know because they like Ford or something Uh, I like Ford I want to run the Ford I won't (laughs) go fast I, I don't think that they have support or anything from Ford so 
while I'm sure a lot of fans on iRacing, you know, love Ford and would like to have the Ford truck, I understand from iRacing's point, while it might be unrealistic to scan it, considering that it's really not used, even though a couple of teams do run it. So, but we are getting the truck, and we are, are the, not the truck, but the Tundra and the Chevy, the new Chevy, um, and to go back to what I said, where the scanner is already being put into use, um, they were scanning the Chevrolet truck today. Uh, and there was a picture on Twitter and everything like that. I might have retweeted it, but I can't remember. Um, so, looks pretty neat. Scanner's already going to work. And, of course, we're getting the new trucks, which is something that they've been needing to do for a while. Hmm. I know I've retweeted it, because I just did. <laughs> nice uh, job. Also, in uh, looking at the iRacing Twitter, which, of course, you should all be following because you get these little tidbits of information uh, throughout, the, <coughs> throughout the week, and uh, when we're not telling you about it, you can get it right from the horse's mouth. I want to mention that it makes me feel... The iRacing.com, uh, the official Twitter account of iRacing, makes me feel special. Do you know why that is, Chad? No. Because they have... You know, they're one of those big corporate, uh, you know, uh, Twitter accounts, and they have, you know... 24, almost 25,000 people following them, and they follow 638 people back. And I'm one of them. And that makes me feel good about myself. They don't follow me. Oh, I didn't even know that. I was expecting you to just go, yeah, they follow me too. And I'll be like, yeah, that's cool. Oh. But I think, to be fair, I believe they followed me way back when I was doing the initial stuff by myself, and they probably didn't realize I brought on a partner. And everybody yeah. we try to interview for my racing leaves the company. So. <laughs> okay, only it's like, one. Oh, you went on the show. You're fired. <laughs> As, uh, yes. Although most, well, I guess uh, Tim Wheatley. Uh, technically, yeah. I did not interview him, but he was my very first contact into uh, iRacing. He was the the person I talked to initially when I <laughs> I registered iRacing today. I was already do the podcast, and it's like, wait. I'm using their name in my thing. I should probably ask their permission. So Tim was the guy I actually coordinated with and gave me permission to uh, to use the name in the uh, in the show. So and then he left the company. So I, I'm just saying we're cursed. So it's probably good that they're not following you because uh, there's a curse related. I think it's just me that's involved. So you're probably safer. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, um, one other thing that I'll mention since we're still kind of on the subject um, about that 24 hour race at Daytona. Mm -hmm. Uh, Steve Myers put up a tweet today saying that the staff is entering, the staff meaning the iRacing staff, hmm. uh, entering the 24-hour race. And they need a paint scheme Ooh. for the BMW that they are going to be driving. Of course, that's the BMW Z4 blah, blah, blah. Um, blah, blah, anyways, blah? <laughs> yeah, well... How disrespectful. <sighs> okay. Uh, and he says to tweet him a picture of custom skins for us. The winner gets 50 credits. Then he says the scheme has to be a new custom iRacing scheme for us to use. We will choose the best one on Thursday, January 29th. So, all you painters out there, I'm actually considering doing this. Um, get out there and paint up something for the old staff to race. Of course, it has to be in the BMW, which you can download from... Uh, if you don't own the car, you can download it from tradingpaints.com um, and paint it up and send it via the Twitter. Did they have any other rules as to what sort of livery this could be? What sort of sponsors yeah. could be on it? Um, not that I saw. Hmm. Because I'm thinking, we have an army of people who listen to this show. A lot of them are good painters. I'm thinking if they got a bunch of paints entered into this contest that just happen to have our show logo on them, maybe they might say, wait, what is this iRacing Today radio show thing? And more people within the walls of iRacing might take note, and they might race our car. Now, how cool would that be? Yeah. I think that everybody out there should do that. I was actually going to put a big old our show logo on there. But what I was kind of thinking, and I'm not going to give it all away because somebody will copy me and steal my thunder. But Wait, I need to take I was, notes. <laughs> get out your pen and paper now. Uh, I was going to you know, make it kind of an iRacing themed car, but then uh, put our show logo on there as well. Cool. And our link to our website. Oh, on a completely unrelated note. Uh, wait, no, 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 no. I can't say this. Can't say it. But I need you to paint me a new car. But I can't say which one. <laughs> 
Okay. This is I know I know I know what this is, but I could so have fun with this right now and, and just but I'm not going to. Because I know what he's talking about, but you guys aren't allowed to know. So um anyways, now we kinda made that into like three news items, but we still have one more news item left. And we it do. happened today. Oh right, that one. Uh. <laughs> There was a uh, the one that I said, "Hey, did you know this happened?" Said, yeah, that happened this. Did happen this morning? You're so behind the times. Like, well, it's the first time I've logged into iRacing today. Yet. And then he was like, "Hey, way to use your show name." Um, but then he was like, "Oh yeah, they got a new laser scanner." I was like, "Man, that was so yesterday." I looked at the tweet. It was literally yesterday. <laughs> like he wasn't like, being, man, it wasn't a sarcastic yesterday. No, it's like it was actually yesterday. Ah, but there was a uh, anybody who logged into iRacing today, apparently from this afternoon on, uh, would notice that there was a new build release, or like you know, not really a build; it's a patch basically, uh, with a few little features and stuff. As the, we mentioned before, between big builds, they will uh, sometimes put in uh, uh, little minor fixes and tweaks throughout the season. Uh, while tech, well, uh, Chad plays threes on his phone over there. Which is an awesome game. You should play it too. I'm sure that. <laughs> I just got five dollars. <laughs> five? I thought it was twenty. Or did somebody sign up? He said I got it one fourth of the way right. Scott Feldenhausen. <laughs> I'll sing the whole song if you want me to. I mean, if it's you know money, I I have no problem. I copied his tweet exactly. Oh, I see. Uh, I demand the anyway. other. Three-fourths of my money. You can dance if you want to. You can if leave Trevor's your friends, friends don't behind. Dance, they are no friends and of Trevor. your friends don't dance. And if they don't dance, well, they're no friends of mine. So, okay, so we can go where we want to. clarify what's going on here. <laughs> tweet. Tweet. Wow, there we go. Tweet, Scott tweet. sent me. <laughs> Scott, Scott, Scott Felton has a listener of the show. Uh, sent me a tweet and said that he would give me $20 if I said that on the show. And I said it exactly as he wrote it, but he only gave me five. Oh, cheap. He said I only got one fourth of it right. But hey, I still got five bucks. Hmm. The things that I do for this show. The things that I do for money. I finally got paid for this, man. I mean, I've been doing this show <laughs> for I don't know how long, and I finally got paid. All right, things please do continue. For money, with you'll never understand. And stop singing. I told you this on the last show. Don't ever sing. I will never stop singing, sir. Race control has had a couple of adjustments made in this small little patch. There's not a lot of uh, not a lot of meat here, just a few little items and whatnot. Uh, apparently, there was a bug that, uh, with the way that uh, missing starts worked, apparently sometimes it would not work right. <laughs> so they fixed that. Uh, there was one here that got uh, Chad excited, uh, and I yes. say excited because, like, I mean, he would just jump up and down saying, "I," like, he was crying. It was great. What was that feature? <laughs> Pretty sure none of that's true, <laughs> but um, I, d I did think that this was pretty cool though. Um, they added the ability to allow in your local, excuse me, local test session server. So, in other words, the offline testing that you do and nothing else, um, to select a custom specified pit stall, which, basically, uh, <clears throat> for those of you that may not be understanding, when you go into a test session right now. You are literally placed in the last pit stall, which some consider the first, but in reality, it's actually the last pit stall because you're at the exit of pit road. Mm -hmm. um, so you're right there at the very end, and you're you could literally just you know drive right onto the track from that pit stall, um, and you're placed there every time by default. Well, this little feature uh, allows you to go into your INI file, the app file, uh, which is in your My Documents iRacing folder. And it allows you to customize uh, which pit stall that you were actually placed in. So, for example, if you wanted to be placed in uh, the 15th pit stall from the end, then you would have to figure out, you know, what that might be and punch in the number, and I'm just going to make up a number, 23, and then you would be in that pit stall. Uh, so I think that's kind of neat because it, you could actually use this um, maybe on a track that you might struggle with pit road or something to practice from different points uh, hmm. on the pit lane and, you know, get that. I mean, you might not get it the exact pit stall that you're going to be in when you're actually in the race because obviously qualifying happens right before the race. And so you never really know until the race starts. Um, 
but it would at least allow you to practice or simulate, you know, being in a uh, general area of that part of the pit road and give you some practice coming in and out of the pit. So I kind of thought that was cool. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said it's one of those things where it would be more useful if you could predict um, where you would be during a particular race. And I guess if it was a, um, uh, I guess if it was one of those situations where um, you had a hosted race, like a league race coming up, and you, you know, knew where you were going to be starting because of some criteria, whatever, then you could practice yeah. pitting with that particular thing, or like Chad said, just do some practicing with it at the end, well, the middle, and, you know, the beginning of pit road, just kind of get a feel for the different positionings. Well, and it's kind of like with these, you mentioned earlier that some of these leagues and series and stuff and hosted rooms have done the 24-hour or 12-hour or 6-hour endurance races. Mm -hmm. And in some of those leagues, they do qualifying like three or four days before the event. So if you knew at said track where you were, what, you know, pit stall you were starting in, you, all of your team could go in there now in their own test session. I mean, you can't do this in like a hosted or whatever, but in their own test session and, you know, start from that pit stall and kind of practice from that stall. And it, it would also, I think, allow you to become more comfortable with the surroundings, you know, like knowing where your pit stall is. Because a lot of people, and a lot of, I mean, this, this is not their fault, but a lot of times you join a race, you qualify 13th, and then you do the race and you're all involved in the race and suddenly you have to make a pit stop and you don't remember where that pit stall is because you haven't been there yet. So it would be helpful in a situation like that. True. Uh, another situation would also be the fact that, and we are giving this feature way too much Way too time. much time. But, <laughs> but, I mean, there are certain uh, tracks where the entrance to pit road can be real tricky. And if you're in those first couple of pit stalls, Bristol comes yeah. to mind, um, yeah then you can mess that up. And I've been in in league races. Like This is an actual example where I was at Bristol and I was one of the first two, uh, two three pit stalls uh, coming onto pit road. And I missed my pit stall because I came in, I'm waiting for to see my dude so I can turn in. And by the time I saw him, I'm already past him. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, well, okay, guess I'll just go around again and, then. <laughs> and Bristol was actually one of the first things that came to my mind because you – you actually start entering your pit stall before you ever get to pit road at that track mm -hmm. because it's so quick and right there. So that would actually, that's a perfect example um, of where it might be handy to, to practice this. But anyways, that's enough of that. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> uh, they also made a uh, change to something with Oculus Rift. So uh, apparently people... Yeah, Fix the problem with rendering one pass shadow volumes in right eye for rift that was mainly visible at night tracks. Now there's a very specific bug to squish. <laughs> um, something to do with windowed mode and uh, the uh, one of my one of my favorites from this little uh, short list is the fact that and it has nothing not, nothing to do with what they change. It's the fact that they called lollipop guy pit guy and I love that. Yeah. I love that he's been promoted from lollipop man to pit guy. <laughs> Because it just sounds so much cooler. And apparently, <laughs> and this one, improved the static pose the pit guy uses if you have vertex shaders turned off. So if you had vertex shaders turned on, he would be posed in a certain way, which I'm sure was very professional and preparing to assist in the service of your vehicle. Uh, perhaps if you had vertex shaders turned off, perhaps he was sitting there sticking his tongue out at you. I don't know, but apparently his pose has changed. Maybe his attitude. Maybe he's, maybe he's a better person for this bug fix. You know, if you choose to have vertex shaders turned off. I don't know. I like the fact that he actually moves that stick around, if you haven't noticed the new, you know, like as you're going, it's in one position, then he kind of slides it down <laughs> and yeah. then gets ready to, it's like, shoot, gung, there we go, let's do this. <laughs> so... I'm Pit sure he guy. says those exact words too when he does it. Well, I'm Very sure he does. I mean, you know, and he makes the noises. Shung, dung. <laughs> Let's do this. Good pit uh, stop, boys. Good pit stop. And and of course they reverted. I mean, in an obvious change that everybody could see coming, they reverted the latest Texas Club logos to previous non-canon versions. So anybody writing out fan fiction for the Texas Club logo, uh, anything that's been previous is no longer canon. Uh, they have started a new storyline. Um, 
they have killed off Batman uh, in Texas, and they are creating a new storyline where Robin becomes Batman. Um, I know that actually happened in the story, so never mind. Yeah, but so I, I don't know what they mean by non-canon version. Non, I, the first thing I thought was storyline. I'm guessing there was a canon in the Texas logo. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe there's maybe there's some CD there. Maybe uh, the the logo was inappropriate because of the way it looked. I wish I knew. I don't know what it used to look like. I don't know what it looks like now. I should look it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, they made apparently they made that change. So. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Why would Andy Small favorite a tweet that I was mentioning, and the tweet is you saying check your email, which I, I find that <laughs> amusing that the fact that you use that as a mechanism, when in fact I actually check my email way more than I check my Twitter. I check Twitter when my email says to go check Twitter. So I would actually see the email saying, you've got a tweet, go check the tweet. The tweet says, go check your email. <laughs> but Andy apparently loves your means of communication because he has favored at that tweet. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, man. To get favorites on Twitter, Bill. Uh, <laughs> but that will complete what the is? end the news segment. Excellent. I'm so happy. Our first one of 2015 was very successful. <laughs> I'm sure it's very what now? <laughs> it was very successful. Oh, I, I, you kind of got the stuffed nose thing, and I, I, it sounded like it was very special. <laughs> it's like, I, it was okay. I mean, I don't know about how special it was, but yeah. Uh, for the record, I am getting over a cold. Hmm, yes, you definitely uh, sound it. You sound quite horrible, as a matter of fact. I'm very yeah, certain. I actually uh, did not go to work today. I can, so, oh, so you can't go to work, but you can do a two-hour marathon podcast that evening. Oh, I hope your boss is not watching. I'm not. I'm not in front of other people, so I'm not breathing on them and all that stuff. Oh, I see. Okay. And I had a fever too, so I decided not to be around people. Fever. <clears throat> Our experiences, which experiences. also has a mix of rookie tips and surprises. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> mishmash of. Hey, we haven't talked to you guys for two weeks, so here's a bunch of stuff involving eye racing. Yeah. Uh, so you want to start with me? Uh, well, it says uh, Chad. Uh, so that, it doesn't have to go in that order. I need order in my life. Okay. I, well, then we'll go. I, I need structure. <laughs> Obviously. Um, so <laughs> uh, as I mentioned on one of the last couple of shows we did last year, um, I have decided to race in the Skip Barber series this season. And, of course, the V8 Supercar series. Um, and then, uh, if I can, you know, I'm going to jump in a couple of other little series, just random, but that hasn't happened yet so far, unfortunately. But uh, the Skip Barber series, I'll touch on real quickly here. Um, so far, that's actually been... A whole lot more fun than I thought it would be, and that's not a knock on the series. It's more of a knock on me, uh, because that car, as we've mentioned before, can be a little tricky to drive. Um, it can get out of control on you pretty quickly, uh, but it is, and because of that, it makes it that much more fun when you can actually save it. You know, when you kind of go into that slide and you're kind of almost in a dirt track formation, correct it, and it's like, wee. Um, <laughs> It's just like that. Wee! Wee! <laughs> Don't make fun of me, man. Um, so, I'm having so uh, much fun! <laughs> I can't wait to do this again! <laughs> uh, so my <clears throat> first few Skip Barber races have been quite successful, actually. Um, now, as some of you may know from either me talking about them on the show or if you've watched any of my previous streams of like when I did the GT3 races, I kind of had a stretch of races where I wasn't really uh, quote-unquote trying to be the, you know, a fast driver, beat other people per se. I was more or less just trying not to be in the way and, and if somebody really caught me and unless, you know, it was like the last couple of laps and I wanted to hold them off, I would kind of just let them go. Mm. Because it was like, get away from me. You know, it's kind of like, don't, I don't want you to be racing. Go away, go away, go away. <laughs> wow. That was weird. I uh, hope that's on video. Um, so I, uh, I've kind of changed now. 
I'm not really so much trying to be on the track and stay out of everybody's way, start in the back. I haven't qualified yet for a race, which I, I'm going to start doing that, I think. But um, this the Skip Barber stuff, <clears throat> the first race of the season was at Okiyama, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go out here. I'm going to try to do the best that I can because I know Okiyama pretty well. But I'm still going to kind of play this where I stay out of people's way because I'm – at that point, that was only like my third or fourth race ever in the Skip Barber. So I was still kind of being careful because I was still considering myself a rookie of the series. Because hmm. that's only four races or three races. So, But it turned out that I got such a great start and passed a couple of guys and then a couple of other people spun out that I actually ended up having a really good race. And in the middle of the race, actually kind of turned my uh the way i was approaching the race from more of just kind of being there and on the track to really kind of being on offense and really attacking and trying to you know do well and i ended up doing well because i ended up finishing in third so i was pretty stoked about that um and that stream is on my youtube if you want to watch it if you haven't um and then the next week we went to uh suzuka which is a track that i really enjoy um, and the neat thing about that is that I was it was during the holiday break when I was off work. <clears throat> and so uh, Andy was still at work, and Andy was like, hey, you need to stream. Mm. you know. So I have something to watch when I'm at lunch. And so uh, I found out what time he went to lunch, and, and I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do my Skip Barber race because it's pretty short. He'll be able to watch the whole thing, and it'll be great, you know, not just for him but for me and everybody else because I'll go ahead and get my race out of the way, and it's kind of a weird week with Christmas, you know, and so I, I know I wasn't going to have a ton of time, and there were 19 cars in the race, I had car number 19, um, which means, for those of you that don't know, I had the worst I rating of anybody in there, uh, and according to I rating anyways, I was supposed to finish last, hmm. so when I got in there, I still had the mindset of attacking, but I was like, you know what, I was supposed to finish last, so if I finish 15th, that's okay because it's better than finishing last, and I'll probably gain some eye rating. Well, I ended up finishing in 12th, uh, which I was pretty pleased with, all things considering. Uh, the stream had a lot of activity with uh, people talking, and it was, it was just a fun afternoon of, of racing. Um, and like I said, I got 12th, so it worked pretty well. Uh, the next week, which was last week, was Circuit of the Americas. The very first race I did went horribly, but not because of something I did or something that someone else did in the race to me, it was because of my computer. Um, and it kept, Windows kept trying to add new devices through the USB. Um, and while, I don't know why. While you're racing? <laughs> yeah, it kept like doing the thing where like if you plug, you know, like you guys know, when you plug a u new USB device in, it does that, da -da, you know, and it kind of freezes for a quick second and then it, starts installing or whatever you know if it's already something you've had installed it just starts going again and it kept doing that like over and over and over and over again the race was 10 laps it probably did it like 10 times or 12 times you know through the race so because of that my pedals would like disable and my steering wheel would like disable and other things would disable for like a second so it really kind of caused me to have a pretty terrible race um but i i got it patched up enough to where I was able to do another race right after that and it went way better never had a problem with my USB thing and a uh, guy watching the stream actually gave me a couple of tips on getting around the track in the Skippy and his tips actually really helped me and I went from being a kind of a not so great 7th or 8th place driver to being a pretty solid 7th or 8th place driver and ended up I think I got 7th in that race Right. Um, and my lap times really improved with the tips that he gave me, like by about two seconds, for the last four or five laps of that race. So um, that was a lot of fun. Um, and for the record, uh, I forget his actual real name, but uh, I know his Twitch name. Um, his Twitch name is Longer Night, and he says he listens to our show. So hi. Um, hey, Longer, but, Mr. Knight. But he, yeah. <laughs> But he's uh, he actually helped me, and from what I can see, fix my USB problem that I was having where it kept trying to install stuff, which was stupid because I wasn't plugging in anything. Cool. 
So I, I disabled that feature, um, and he actually helped me figure it out because he had had something similar to that. So shout out to him because I've raced twice since then, and I've done you know some other little practices and stuff, and I haven't had a problem. So this looks like it fixed. Um, but then today, uh, or this evening rather, I did my next Skippy race. Mm -hmm. And today's race was by far the best one that I've ever had in the Skip Barber race. Not necessarily because of where I finished, but just because of the racing. Um, the first couple of laps were very interesting because on the very first lap of the race, I went into uh, one of the turns, this is that Canadian tire, by the way, um, or what used to be Mo Sport, in case you're not familiar with the new name, because I don't know why you would call something Canadian Tire, but it's a sponsor, I guess. Um, it's, it's a store that's up here in Canada is where you buy automotive parts and sporting stuff, and it's a big deal up here, and apparently they now sponsor the track. Thank you for that clarification. Um I knew it had to be some kind of a sponsor or something. I thought it was a garage, but I was I guess I was all They also do auto repairs and stuff. But they're oh. also very expensive and nobody uses them. Well apparently some people use them because they can afford a sponsorship. Well I did use them to get put to put new tires on my wife's car. Like I bought new tires there and they got them to put it on. So I guess not that we don't use them, just you normally yeah. go to a mechanic for mechanic stuff. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's the track, and if you haven't driven the Skippy yet at that track, I recommend that you do, um, because it it's a lot of fun, but it's like a different kind of fun with that car, because you, you don't really use the brake much, and you really kind of just, I don't really know how to describe this, but you kind of just like fly into the corner, and you basically just hope that the weight of the car is going to stick to where it gets you through the turn, nice and smoothly and you don't cross that line of then suddenly you know flipping the weight too much to one side and spinning out you know and wrecking off in the tire bears right. it's fun because it's kind of challenging but it's really not that hard to do if you just put in a little bit of effort you know on trying not to flip the weight from one side to the other too quickly um, and the first lap of the race I was trying to I was trying to get a good enough run. I wasn't really trying to pass the guy, but I was just trying to get a run to maybe where I could set up a pass in the next couple of turns. Well, he kind of checked up more than I thought he was going to, and so I had that mini, you know, panic where I was like, oh, shoot, you know, I don't want to run over him or into the side of him. So I kind of hit the brakes just a little to, you know, keep myself from getting too close to him. And when I did that, I was still in the middle of shifting the weight, so it kind of spun me almost. So I kind of did this half sideways spin and then went through the grass and then managed to save it while I was in the grass and kept going straight and back out on the racetrack like nothing had ever happened. <laughs> and it was kind of really cool, uh, to be completely honest. And I kept going. Well, then a lap later, uh, we were entering one of the final couple of corners there, and I don't know how it happened because I never saw it. I just saw the smoke. But a couple of guys started wrecking right in front of us. <laughs> and... At first, the track was open on the far left-hand side of the track. And I was like, okay, I'll just squeeze through there and, you know, get through the wreck. Well, then they f kind of spun in that direction. And so basically the whole track was blocked. And the only way I was going to get by the crash without just coming to a stop, which I was already going too fast to do that, was to just cut through the grass. <laughs> so I actually, like, veered hard left. Went straight through the grass, got the slow down black flag for a couple of seconds, and then kept going, you know, like nothing ever happened, and picked up like three spots. Um, so uh, after that, me and this guy named Carl and the guy named Carlo uh, ended up being together. And we basically stuck like glue for the rest of the race. We could not get rid of each other. We One of us would go in front, and they couldn't pull away. Then I'd go in front, couldn't pull away. You know, it was just constant. We kept changing spots, and it was like some of the best racing, really, that I've ever had on a road course, uh, but especially in the Skippy. And we went back and forth, back and forth, until coming to the white flag, uh, Carlo, <clears throat> he said his brakes locked up, which is a shame. He ended up spinning out. And so then it was just me and uh, Carl. And Carl was ahead of me at this point. And so I made it like a point on the last lap to try and pass him. Mm. And I managed to get around him in the couple last couple of turns. 
and ended up getting in third position for the finish. So I've, I don't necessarily count the one at Circuit of the Americas that was a real bad race. So in basically four races, I've got two podiums with two thirds and have been pretty competitive throughout, you know, the few races I've done in that series. So I'm, I'm having a, a, a blast really in that series. It's pretty fun. And that car is a, a lot of fun to drive too. Right. So, um, I'm glad that I, uh, you know, obviously decided to jump in there and do that. I had a lot, a lot of fun today at Canadian Tire. I didn't, I didn't know if that was going to be that much fun of a race or not, but man, it was a blast. So definitely recommend doing that if you haven't. Most excellent. <clears throat> now, the main series that I'm going to talk about also will bring Trevor in to it at one point. Um, and that's, of course, the V8 Supercar Series. Which I knew when I decided to race this car was going to be a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but I didn't know it was going to be this much fun. <laughs> um, like I, I have not had this much fun in a while, on with a road car on iRacing. Like I mean, I've had a lot of different road cars that I've raced and I've had a blast with them. And I told you guys that my favorite car on the sim was the McLaren. The VA car is getting close to beating it. Because, and I don't really even know how to explain it, but the V8 car just seems to fit my driving style for some reason. Um, I don't know if it's because it's got a lot of horsepower, you got to be heavy on the brakes, it can get a little squirrely on you. Um, and it kind of sometimes wants to have a mind of its own, I guess. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the reasons are, but I, I just, it fits me really well. So... As a result, I have been having so much fun. Um, part of the uh, part of the reason why I've been having so much fun, I believe, anyways, just personally, uh, is because of these pedals as well. Hmm. And just the way that the brake pedal is, and I, I keep telling you guys, the brake pedal is really hard to push. The best example that I can tell you about how hard it is to push. When you go into iRacing and they you do the pedal thing and it tells you to fully depress the throttle, fully you know press down the brake, fully press down the um, clutch, and you're kind of calibrating them. I did that the other day because I uh, had unplugged those pedals and plugged in a different set of pedals, and we'll get to that later um, as to why I did that. But when I plugged back in my my uh, main PC pedals and then recalibrated them real quickly just so that I was ready to go for the next time I raced, which was today, I literally had to like use both feet to push the pedal fully to 100%. It's like, good night. This is hard. Um, but those things, I think, have really helped with the, the V8. I would have fun in the V8 anyways, but they're helping me have more fun. Um, the first race week was at Orm Park which is a very difficult racetrack. That might be one of the most difficult road courses that I've been on, but because of that, it's probably one of the most fun. Um, you guys kind of know me that I like a lot of the challenging stuff. A lot of the tracks that a lot of people hate, I'm in love with <laughs> because they're challenging, like a Bristol, a Darlington, for example. Um, and Orm Park is on that list too. Um, but I, I managed to get fifth in that race, Small disclaimer, though, it was a very small fill size. So while it's like, hey, you got fifth in your first V8 car race, dude, that's awesome. But you only beat like a couple guys, so <laughs> it's not as cool. I beat, um, I beat but, the other dude in the room. <laughs> yeah, but the reason why it was a small, small filled is because I had missed the strength of field for that week, and it was like 1.15 a.m. in the morning when I got to do that race. And I was racing with everybody in there was from Australia. So... I was just glad I got the race to go official because I had been trying, you know, for several days to get one official and couldn't uh, make it happen. The times when I was home couldn't make it happen. The times when I was gone, most of those went official. Go figure. <laughs> but um, so I got that one done, and like I said, I ended up finishing fifth, which I was pretty happy with. But I was more happy with the fact that I did not wreck in that race. I kept it on the track, except for one little moment where I just barely went off the road, but it was really nothing. Um, it was my own fault because I just didn't break enough. But um, the next week was at some point, and that went really well. Um, that was <clears throat> different 
in some ways, and I'll explain that in a minute. But here is the first rookie tip. Ah. Actually, the first two of our three rookie tips that we're going to be sharing. Um, two of them happened in this exact race, in the Summit Point race, in the V8 car. Uh, the first one happened to me. Um, now, most of you know that on a lot of the road racing series, not all of them, but a lot of them, uh, they use the standing start. Well, I don't know how many standing starts I've done in my life, but I know it's got to be at least 50. I mean, I've been there, done that, pretty experienced in standing starts. Do you, in fact, have the T-shirt? No. Am I supposed to? Well, if you've been there and done that, I mean, the next step <laughs> is to go to the gift shop and buy the T-shirt. Oh, well, I don't have the T-shirt. Okay. But I, now I'm going to make one, and, and next week it'll be, I have <laughs> done a standing start. Um, so, uh, the first rule about standing starts is to not roll the car before the green light. I was, I was pretty sure that the first rule of standing starts is we don't talk about standing starts. It's a Fight Club no. re reference. Never mind you. No. I don't even no. know if you've seen that movie. No. <laughs> okay. But I know what you're kind of talking about, but <laughs> we're not going to allow it right now. Uh, so, uh, because if you do that, in case you don't know and you haven't been in a standing start, before the light goes green, if your car moves, you will actually get disqualified because it thinks that you're trying to jump the start. So... Even if you just accidentally, you know, let out, let out of the throttle or something. So the first rule is that if you have a clutch, is to put the clutch in so that the car won't roll. Uh, if you don't, then I would just use the brake. And then you put it in gear and push the throttle full down so that you can get a good jump on the initial start of the race. Well, I mean, that's not like the expert way necessarily to do it, but that's kind of what you do. Well, the rookie tip is that... I got everything ready to go. I had the clutch pushed in. I had the throttle pretty much fully revved, you know, and it was ready, not the throttle, but the engine, you know, and it was ready to go. And then the light went green, but my car didn't go. And I was sitting there like, why on earth is this not happening? You know, I had the throttle pushed in. I was not touching the clutch. A guy hit me, but he kind of swerved, so he didn't really hit me, you know, like in the rear. He just kind of sideswiped me as he went by. And then I kept sitting there. That gave me actually a little bit of speed because he pushed me, <laughs> technically. Ooh, now I'm so going. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there. Come on, I can win this. <laughs> um, I'm sitting there like rolling at like six miles an hour now, still trying to figure out what's going on. Another guy kind of swipe swipes me and kind of gives me a little bit more speed. And yet I still could not figure out why I could not go. And then it dawned on me that I forgot to do something before the green light. Do you know what that is, good sir? I do. You were not in gear, were you? <laughs> no. I did not put it into first, which is the first time that I have ever done that. And I've had like 50-some standing starts. You know, so, I, I was going to say, putting it into not putting your car into gear before the race starts, that's got to be pretty close to, hey, can we start this in first gear? Sure, just mash on the gas. Everything will be great. <laughs> That's got to be at least on par with that one for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, rookie tip of the uh, week. Number one, put it in gear on a standing start. Good call. Before it goes green. So, okay, so just uh, for my own sake. So you put it in gear, you have your foot on the brake, you have your, but, and you also have your foot on the clutch as well to, like, is that, I, I walk me through the clutch part of this standing start part again. Okay, so like with me, when I this is what I do, and it may be the wrong way to do this, I don't know, but what I do is when I hit the grid button and I start sitting there, I push in the clutch pedal. Mm -hmm. I don't touch the brake at all because okay. the car's already stopped. Right. I, I push in the clutch pedal, and then there's a certain point right before the green light goes off where you can put the car in gear, and once I get to that point, I put it in first, and I'm still holding in the clutch, and then... I start holding down the gas pedal and it still keeps me sitting still because when you have the clutch pushed in the throttle is not really working well, per se. Right, obviously. Yeah, so that's how I do my standing starts. Oh, okay. Because then all I have to do is let out of the clutch and I'm just, you know, I'm off to the races provided I'm in gear. 
That's right. So in that, so in at like an actual car, like I've never actually, I've, I've, I've wondered because most of the cars we race here are semi-automatic type cars where you don't use the clutch. And I was just curious if this was a situation where you're actually using the clutch pedal. Yeah. I mean, you know, because most of the cars we race, you just change gear. Like it's not like a well, street car where you're, you know, gas off, clutch in, change gear, clutch out, gas in kind of thing. Yeah, and the V8 is actually a car that does not use the clutch. So, but the only reason why, but I mean, you can still use the clutch, but it, it, it does not require it, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Because um, obviously your clutch is always going to be on in your sim rig. So, unless you don't use it for some reason. Well, I don't, but, have, a, I don't have a clutch pedal, for instance. Well, yeah. <laughs> but if you do, then it's always on. Um, so, like a V8, you don't ever see me during the race. Like if you watch the streams of my V8 races... You never actually see me use the clutch when I'm changing gears, going up or down, um, because it doesn't need it. But for the standing starts, I do put the clutch in, and then as soon as the green light goes off, I'm off of that clutch and going. But on that one particular moment, I didn't have it in gear. Okay. So, rookie tip, put it in gear. Um, now, the second rookie tip in this race actually comes from a listener of the show uh, and someone who has actually been extremely helpful um, with the V8 car itself, uh, to me anyways. And then I've kind of shared some of that information to Trevor as well. Um, which again, he's going to eventually tie into all, all this. <laughs> um, he's just sitting over there patiently. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> but, um, Roy Clark, who, um, uh, is from Australia. He, uh, who, who I believe we have mentioned on the show before. Yes, we have because we both of us ended up racing with him at one right. point. Right? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's why where he came up. Um, he in that summit point race in the couple laps in, uh, it may have even been the first lap. I don't know, but it it was within the first couple laps. Uh, I went through one of the turns and I see a car sitting off in the field, and I I told you guys before I don't race with F three and I don't have any other indication of who is around me unless I turn the F three box on. Well. I, I didn't have it on at that point, so I had no clue who it was. But the only reason why I knew it was Roy was because I had seen that paint scheme before because had, he had gone out and warm up, and I just kind of watched his lap just to see how close or far off I was so far as getting around the track. So I knew his paint scheme. And when I went by, I caught a glimpse of it, and I was like, whoa, that's Roy. And uh, after the race, I was like, yo, what happened to you? And I thought maybe he had gotten wrecked by somebody or – started behind someone and, you know, thought he was going to wreck them and tried to check up and spun himself out or something, you know. But he said that, um, I think it was part of his cockpit, I'm just kind of going off my memory here, had come apart uh, right, right after the race started. So his rookie tip of the week for you guys is to check your equipment before you race. Hmm. Uh, which I think is an excellent rookie tip. And it's a shame that it happened to him in this particular race because he was actually car number one. Uh, and I don't know if he was like, you know, like fast enough to win the race or not, but he having car number one is kind of special. Kind of puts that extra pressure there on you where you're like, hey, I should be able to win, at least based on Irene. Um, so I don't know how, you know, if he would have had a tremendous race or not. I, I, I really don't. But you know, it's, regardless, it's a shame that it was pretty much over within the first couple of laps because his equipment came apart or unbolted itself or whatever it was exactly that it did. Right. Um, so, yeah, check your equipment. Make sure that stuff, you know, like Trevor and I talked about this, we always check our steering wheel. Yeah. Make sure it's bolted down. Stuff like that, you know, is it's good to check before you race because you never know when it might come apart. Yeah, I was going to say, because that's actually ties into something that we talked about when we talked about our pre-race um, video was the fact that, uh, you know, that's one of the things that both we, we didn't, you know, we didn't know what we were going to say, you know, during that segment. And it turns out something we both do where uh, the two of us go through, we check the screws to make sure that screw down, you know, I check to make sure that the pedal um, cables in because I've, it, and this is all from experience with, because I've had it happen. I've had it fail. I've had the wheel move. I've had that cable come out and, you know, all of a sudden now I can't race. <laughs> now I ain't going no more. So, yeah. 
so yeah, that's uh, so. What I'm saying is, Roy, if you actually listen to the show, you would have done that already. I, I'm yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, but that's that's great advice because I mean that's you never know what's going to happen when uh, you know yeah. when, you're, when you get in there and and I'm su- like I, I'm actually surprised. I mean that this thing stays in in spot because like when I actually watch what I'm doing with the wheel while I'm actually racing. It's like, how is this thing just not flying off into my lap sometimes, you know? So. I wonder the same thing, too, with, like, with this wheel. Because for those of you that don't know, we both have Driving Force GT, which you can't, quote, unquote, bolt down. It's only clamped down uh, with things that you tighten up. Hmm. And while that does a good job, it's not, you know, completely bolted down and stuff. So, um but yeah, so that I thought that was a like I said, it's unfortunate it happened to him, but I thought it was a great uh, rookie tip. Um, that and we actually talked about it after the race. I was like, hey, what happened to you? He's like, oh, my stuff fell off, and I was like, man, that'd be a good rookie tip. He's like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing when it happened to me. <laughs> so um, I wanted to share that with everybody so that they could hopefully, hopefully avoid that in the future. Um, now the third race that I've done in the V8 Supercar Series is where Trevor will come into play. Uh, as Trevor, Yay. I believe is. Adjust himself in a seat because I think I've sunk like a couple inches dead before since we started the show. Uh, <laughs> That's not good. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you get old. You're already you pretty shrink, short. You know, <laughs> it, it just happen. You know, it'll happen to you. You'll shrink too. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, and I guess we'll start. I, I guess I'll take over at this point in time. And this kind of ties into a little bit of. I don't know, this ties into everything that, that kind of started this week because this has been a crazy week for me and racing and by proxy also chat as well and several other people um i mentioned that i was going to get into some more racing over the holidays because i'm not on the road like i have been and uh you know so i had an opportunity to actually get some racing done i you know full disclosure here people i'm going to uh, be forthcoming um, I'd actually kind of also gotten into a bit of an iRacing funk. Uh, we've talked about it before where you get into a, a period of time where you just don't want to race. I mean, because when it comes down to it, it's um, it takes some effort. It takes some, unless you're just jumping into nothing but cars, uh, you, you have to put some effort into it. And it's, it's one of those things where it's a long-term commitment where, you know, to a degree, you know, if I'm going to race this, you know, this track, I need to go and I need to do some practice. I need to figure out this, figure out that, then actually, you know, figure out a time to do a race and stuff. And I've mentioned before that my time is limited when it comes to gaming and, you know, this sort of activity because, you know, I'm a husband and father first, you know, so, and this is a secondary activity that I do. So I'd kind of gotten into a bit of a, a thing where I didn't actually want to race. And I was actually thinking things through. It's like, I mean, we do the show, and I love doing the show, but I just haven't been racing. And, and it, I'd gotten most of, the, most of the way through my Christmas break and hadn't raced because I just hadn't felt like, felt like it. And, you know, a part to blame was the fact that Steam had their big sale on, and I bought a bunch of games like an idiot because I always do um, that I don't need. So I was playing a whole bunch of extra things because I'm a gamer at heart. So it's like I have, it's like, okay, well, I got, you know, like an hour to sit down and have some time to myself because the kids are in bed and... You know, my wife is off doing something else. I could jump in and run a few practice laps and maybe get ready for a race. Or I could just play this new shiny thing over here that I just bought, you know, that I can just jump in and do. So I'd always lean in that direction. So it was kind of in a weird place when it came to racing. Um, And then Chad had mentioned, he says, well, you know what? Why don't, you know, the strength of field race for the V8 uh, is on Friday. You know, why don't you jump in that? Now, at that point in time, I didn't even own the V8 car, like the Ford or the Commodore. Uh, I hadn't bought them yet. It's the only cars that I hadn't, other than, you know, the duplicate cars, you know, like the other cup car, the Toyota and the the new Chevy for the nationwide car, because I didn't need them because I was racing the Fords and those. But the, the V8 car was the only one that I didn't actually own, you know, so I could not race in that series. So I thought about it, and I hemmed, and I hawed, and it's like, you know what? You know, he's been having fun with the V8 and car. For the record, he never responded to me. I did not, no. Because, so I didn't know if like he took offense to it. Or <laughs> if, like, man, I, it's at Road America. It's your favorite track. And that was your another, favorite tracks. Yeah, that was another factor, too. Is, you know, it's at Road America. Um, for the record, uh, we've mentioned a couple times during the show, side note here, um, strength of field race. Um, what that is, is kind of, 
in some cars that either have lower participation, which I'm not sure with the VA car. You said you had trouble getting the official races going. Because if you actually look at the stats, it looks like it's pretty well attended. But, I mean, well, it's it the holidays and stuff, too, I guess. It is, but it was more of the day that I was doing it. I, huh. I had gotten it down to, like, a Sunday afternoon, Monday morning kind of thing. Hmm. Because that particular week, I was changing all my streaming stuff over and was still working on a lot of stuff. So... I kind of, while I could have raced during the week and would have made the streak of field races, I missed them because I was busy working on changing everything to itch Ah, okay. So that's why I kind of got in that bundle. Okay. So uh, strength of field races are races basically, it's kind of the, it's the iRacing community creating an unofficial official race to a degree. Uh, it's basically the agreed upon time when we're going to have a race that's definitely going to go official, it's going to have the biggest participation and therefore it's going to have uh, the biggest strength of field. You know, it's going to have the largest amount of people, you know, largest amount of I rating pool to, uh, to draw from. So therefore it's going to have the largest amount of points available. If you're doing championship, uh, largest amount of I rating, if you want to improve that. Uh, so each of the, communities each of the the series typically comes up with unofficially and then you kind of see it through the forums or just talking to people when you get into the the rooms and, and chat with them um this race is going to be our strength of field race and with the v8 race it happens to be the 9 30 eastern friday night race is the strength of field race for them so in case you're curious what we're talking about with that 9 15 9 15 sorry 9 15 so um so that was the race that was going to be, you know, that was coming up for, for that Friday. And it was Road America, uh, which, as, you know, I've talked about a lot, is one of my favorite road courses. So I'm a lot more apt to have a race at Road America because I don't, I only have to learn the, how the car handles that track. I don't have to learn the track yeah. uh, kind of thing, even though I'm not good at it by any means, but I know those corners. You know, I'm, no, I'm not going down a straight stretch saying, oh, is the next one left or right? Or is it, you know, is it a sharp corner, or a, you know, a, you know a, a sweeping corner? Because I know. I love that track. It's so much fun. So I kind of, you know, I, I don't even know what it was that made me decide, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that because I don't, even, I don't even know. It was just, you know, it was one of those things where it's like I decided I was going to make that race. So I bought the car the afternoon of Friday. Um, it was still, you know, we're still on holidays. So, you know, in the afternoon when I got a break from the kids, you know, me and my wife kind of, during the day when I'm home, you know, we kind of take, you know, it's like, okay, you, know, you watch the kids for an hour and I'm going to go do something else just to kind of, you know, spread the responsibilities around. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go downstairs for an hour. And I went down and I started practicing with the, the VA car. And then uh, Chad happened to see that I was on and we jumped on TeamSpeak and he gave me some, you know, some tips and stuff uh, on how to better, ha better handle. And full disclosure, the first thing I, I tweeted out to him, uh, I can't remember if it was, Twitter or email, whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, just Twitter. Uh, my first impression was, I hate this car. <laughs> like, I jumped into it. It wouldn't it wouldn't stop, and it wouldn't turn. And then as soon as it started turning, it turned too much. Like, all I did was here, just take that car here, off the track. <laughs> here is the exact quote. I just found it. Initial impressions. I hate the V8 car. Laugh out loud. Not enough turn, not enough break, and then mid corner too much turn. I also calculated out my field of view, which is something else we're going to talk about. Hmm. So yeah, so, so uh, I hated the car initially, but the more I kind of drove it, and then with Chad on there, and we were talking on team speak, and kind of giving me some advice on you know breaking a little bit earlier in the corner, obvious, but you know, and it, it was one of those things where I, you know, just being walked through it, it's like okay, I I got it, and I started to get you know, how the car was handling and, and, and was getting better. And at least, you know, not fast by any means, but I mean, by the end of that session, I mean, I'd knock like four seconds off my time. It still yeah. wasn't, you know, a hugely competitive time, but I was keeping it, it on the track, close. you know, and, and it was, wasn't was that far off. It was at least as far off as I normally am with a road car, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, I did the practice, decided I was going to make the race, uh, you know, arranged it with my wife, you know, it's like, okay, I'd like to do this race at this time. It's going to take this long. And I even joked to her, it's like, you know, it's like, you know what? It, it should be, you know, it was quarter after seven for me. So I'm going down at, at 630 so I can get ready. I said, I'll, you know, be done by 830 at the latest, but probably way sooner because I'm just going to wreck out and not finish the race. 
Um, got in the race. Full disclosure, I finished the race. Um, and it's funny because it, it, as a little bit, about halfway through the time, she came down and was, you know, I was streaming the race. Uh, and she came down and looked at me. And it's like, yeah, I'm still racing. And she just kind of had this smile on her face. like, it's like, what? And it's like, well, you're still racing, so it must be going good. It's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> so even my wife knew I was kind of in this, you know, uh, mode type thing. So anyway, back to the actual race itself. And, and, and I guess... I guess at the, at the conclusion of it, I mean, to kind of close off the, hey, I don't know where I stand when it comes to racing, because I haven't been doing a lot of it lately, even though I could now. Um, I'll tell you how it ended. I'll, I'll, we'll talk about the race itself in a minute. But by the end of that race, because of everything that happened in the race and the people in the race, um, like I all of a sudden everything was just back. Like I just it. it it was the epiphany of this is why I love doing this. Like I, I just needed to be reminded as to why I love doing this. And that race like had everything in it to just say, all right, see, remember all this stuff. This is why you do this. It's like, Oh, thanks. I remember now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that led to a whole bunch of other things. Um, but back to the actual race itself. And this led to other things as well. Um, there was a listener. A lot of other things. There was a, there was a uh, somebody who had watched some of my YouTube videos, and I apologize, I don't remember the name. Uh, it was a listener to the show, found the YouTube. Uh, or actually, I don't even know if they listened to the show, I, they, but they at least found the YouTube, commented on a bunch of them, and they mentioned uh, you know, my field of view uh, was totally messed up. They said, "You don't actually race like that, do you?" It's like, well, yeah, it's like when, that was the default one, and I've been racing like that for six years. You know, like ever since I started, I have not touched that. You know, it's like, well, if you did the calculation, you know, you would find that you were in a much better position to see the track because that's where you would really be sitting in the car. Like you wouldn't be sitting in the back seat of the car if you were racing it, which is kind of what my field of view was. It was 75 degrees, something like that, I think. Um, so it's like, you know what, I haven't raced for a while. I was always afraid to mess with it because I'd been doing it forever like that anyway, so I didn't want to change it. So it's like, you know what, I haven't raced for a while anyway. I'm, you know, at this point, I didn't know what I was going to do. It's like, you know what, let's just change it. So I made the calculation. It turns out it came to 48 degrees, I think it was. Now, I have to stop you. Hmm. Trevor has known me for several years now. We've become pretty good friends. We do the show. We race together. We stream, blah, blah, blah. And we talk a whole bunch, like, when we're not even doing anything to do with this show. Yeah. <laughs> And I have told him on a couple of occasions, even in his Indianapolis 500 stream, where I was watching his stream while he was racing, and he even came on to TeamSpeak, it's on the stream, you, or you can hear it, and I said, is that really the field of view that you're using? Because you should really calculate that. It doesn't do anything about it. Random guy on YouTube, you should really change your routine. Okay. <laughs> I saw that coming. What the heck? <laughs> So I changed my field of view, and it was, it, it took some getting used to, but it didn't, I cannot say whether or not it helped me, but I know it did not ruin my ability to drive the car, so I left it. Um, I so, can tell you <laughs> that I think it helped you, hmm. and I will explain why once we talk more about the race. So, back to the actual race itself. Um the first part of the what I mentioned, uh, you know, what may, reminded me about the show was the fact that not only did, uh, you know, Chad was also racing, obviously, and we ended up in the same room, which was great. <clears throat> so not only did I have Chad in there racing with me, we were both streaming. Uh, my stream kind of got messed up, so it's not on YouTube yet, but I'm going to try to get it on there soon. Um, but we had listeners of the show. Uh, <clears throat> we had Roy Clark, who we've mentioned, uh, you know, who we brought up here. Uh, he was in there, and uh, Danny Resser was in there as well. So two guys that we've talked with a lot. So it, it was, you know, I love racing with you guys because, you know, that's just, like I said, we do this for fun, and we love interacting with you guys. So to be in this race, you know, now I had, you know, Chad in there, I was in there, we had Danny in there, we had Roy in there, and we're talking, and it just, I don't know, it was just so cool. So uh, I started... <laughs> Thanks to my wondrous eye rating uh, on the roadside, I th I started I started in twenty second position out of twenty three cars. Now this was perfect for me because 
I wanted to start towards the back because, you know, in order to be safe, you know, and again, haven't raced for a while, even though I did practice, probably practice and more for this race than I do for most of the other For ones. the record, the <laughs> most the most cars that can be in a V8 race is 25. Right, and, and you know, and that's another one of those perfect storm things where not only, you know, out of, and uh, there were three splits uh, yeah. during that session. So for the fact that, you know, out of a 25 car field, we had 23 cars and three of them, you know, were people I knew was just awesome. Yep. Um, I second that. So, you know, so I started 22nd, uh, you know, the race started up and 23 cars going towards turn one at Road America, which is a pretty tight right handed corner. And there wasn't chaos. Like that was my first sign that we were on to something here. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, as the race progressed, you know, and, and talking and, you know, you know, not much. And, you know, I guess Chad will probably mention that one as well. Back to the V8 car, it, it is a handful. Like I said, I mean, I, I hated it initially, but then I learned to kind of like it as, you know, I practiced and then liked it a little bit more. And it reminded me of my experience with the Jetta. You know, as I talked about that when I went back to that car, the fact that it was so heavy, so hard to, you know, to stop, to turn, it was giving me, it was making me think out my corners more. It wasn't dive towards corner, slam on brakes, turn wheel. Like I had to race the track more with the Jetta. And this was like that, but amplified <laughs> to a degree. Yeah. So, uh I don't know. I mean, like during the race, it ended up being a good race for me. Uh, you know, I passed. I think that's some, an understatement. I passed some people. You know, some people had problems, and you know, I passed them because you know through attrition. But I ended up actually passing, passing some people. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I got lapped. But I mean, I, and even when I was getting out of the way, I got out of the way and didn't go off the track. <laughs> you know, which is something that I'm famous for because i i overthink what's going on so i put myself in stupid positions because i don't want to be in the way don't want to be in the way so you know it, it's one of those things where i um i i had that confidence back all of a sudden you know where i it's like okay i'm just going to take a slightly wide you know corner through here but he's going to get by me everything's great uh so you know had a very decent race past some cars and didn't and and had to do a pit stop as well <laughs> i mean road america is an easy pit pit uh, pit lane to get into it's hard to time well but it's easy to get into because you have forever to get over <laughs> and into it but i mean mm -hmm. throughout the entire race i mean and it was a long race because you know it's 30 laps but road america is a long course yes, so four miles so you take a while to get around there and I only ended up with seven incident points, which, and all of them were just slight offs. I mean, there was only one time the car actually came to a stop because of a spin, but I, it was still a controlled spin. Like I lost control, but just caught the, caught the grass and just stopped it rather than spinning back on the track kind of thing. But, and you know, when I went for my pit stop, I had 1.2 seconds of optional repair from the, the slightest of a kiss on a wall. So, I mean, I raced that long. I mean, and it was, uh, uh, well, how long was that? Would that race have been? It was about an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, about an hour and ten minutes, and and out of all that, didn't hit anything. Kept the car in one piece. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I was super happy with that. You know, and uh, you know, cutting to the chase, I guess, or should I? I mean, you want to? Well, add anything no. Before let me you get say something real quick. Up? Let me say something real quick. The the reason why I said I think your field of view helped you, hmm. and I know that it's Road America, and you are com more comfortable with that track than uh, another um, track that you haven't a raced lot of, A lot of other road courses. <laughs> yeah. But, so, there is that. But if you ignore that for a moment, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm talking to everyone else listening, too, your field of view, I don't understand, like, I, I kind of do understand, but I don't understand why people don't calculate that. It is one of the easiest things to do. It is so simple. It does it for you. You just have to punch in the numbers. 
it probably takes 30 seconds to do it. Yep. And it, to me, it's one of the best, uh, I don't really know what you would call it. It's not really a feature per se, but it's like a, it's like one of the best things that you could do to your iRacing uh, setup, you know, the way that you view the, the game, so to speak, to help you in your driving. Now, it's not going to make you the best driver ever. Like, you're not suddenly going to become the fastest guy that everybody's trying to beat every week. Mm -hmm. But it is going to make you better because your judgment of what you see is realistic. Like, when Trevor had his view previously, he was down in the seat, in the Indy car in particular, he was down in the seat and backwards. So you could see like his whole where the steering wheel is, which is the dashboard on that car is in the steering wheel, and you could see all that, which is great, and um, you could kind of even see like where in the virtual world his feet would go, you know, to the pedals, and while it's great to see all that, what is the thing that you're doing? You're not there to look at the race car and see all of the pretty stuff on the dashboard. You're there to see the track that you're racing on and in some cases 200 plus miles an hour and so if your field of view is set incorrectly you see less of the track which in turn makes your judgment on hitting apex um, passing people coming up behind people uh, there's all kinds of things that I could throw out there but those are just a couple of things where you don't see those things like you really should be seeing them and you're literally shooting yourself in the foot and yet nobody sets their field of view to their correct thing and it's like they're they're killing themselves and like it's not going to make you three seconds faster than what you were before but it is going to help your judgment you're going to be able to see the track better and therefore you're going to be able to see the car better a, a, an example you might be coming up behind a car to try and set up a pass, and you might think, if your field of view is set incorrectly, that you're about to wreck them. But in reality, you are 10 feet from them. It just depends on your field of view and the person. Yep. Whereas if your field of view is set correctly, you're going to see them, and you're going to know. I mean, you, you told me on this show in my Talladega race that I was making a lot of daring moves, you know, and cutting in the little holes that weren't necessarily there. Mm -hmm. Guess what? because I could see those holes and I knew that I could get there. So I, the field of view to me is like one of the more important things and yet nobody does it. And so I think in your race, you did better even though you may not have fully realized it because you could see the track better. And so you knew where your breaking points were in your mind. You may not even have thought about it, but I just think you could see it better and you reacted to them better. And also, something else I noticed, you mentioned you had seven incidents. Mm. All seven of those came in the first 15 laps of the race. The last 15 laps of your race, you did not have a single incident point. Huh, I did not realize that. And, or at least I'm pretty sure it was 15. It might have been 14. It was right after your pit stop. You didn't have another incident point. Hmm. And I also think that that is because of your field of view, but it's also because you, by that time, I mean, 15 laps doesn't sound like a lot, but at a road America, that's like forever. And so I think by that time, you had really kind of settled into a, a nice rhythm. So I just wanted to say that because, like, I strongly encourage you to do the field of view if you have not. I know one thing that I will guarantee, and Trevor will back me up on this, guaranteed 100%, if you have not set your field of view to the correct thing, and then after you listen to this, you do it. It will be weird. Oh, yeah. Weird, weird, weird. But if you stick with it, I promise you it will be better. Yeah. I mean, and realistically, like you said, I mean, all you need is, like, I just reached over and made in the video of wondering what the heck I was doing. Like, I just, I still had the tape measure here. Like, it was, like, all you yeah. need to do is just measure out how... Yeah how wide the monitor is with the bezel without the bezel and how far away your eyes are from the center of the screen. And that's all yeah. I did. And then you put it in. So it takes 30 seconds. Yeah. I mean, and you, you literally, you cannot screw it up because <laughs> you measure it, you punch in the numbers. It's simple. And yet nobody does it. 
Well, like I said, I mean, and for me, it was the fact that I've, I was, I was scared to change it because I've raced like yeah. that for six years, and why change now? <laughs> and that is exactly the reason that everybody says, and I understand that. I really do, because you get comfortable with something, and you want to keep doing it. When I first got on iRacing, I did not have my field of view set correctly, and then eventually I did do it, and it was weird. I felt like I was outside of the car. I felt like I was sitting in the windshield, but that's kind of realistic because you're not you're not sitting like you said earlier in the back seat of the car you're sitting right in front of the windshield or if you don't have a windshield then you know and depending on the car you're right there at the part of the car where you should be sitting with your field of view being correctly mm -hmm. so it's very important so that was one thing that i changed for that race now there's a couple things that i'm proud of for this race and you know it it leads into things that i've done um uh, in the past type thing. And one of those is the fact, like I said, I was able to get out of the way of cars and not drive off the track. I was able to let off just enough to be safe to do it. Uh, another fact was one thing I am uh, famous for is when somebody comes up behind me, uh, he was faster than me, even if I'm not trying to let them by, just forgetting all about my marks and just messing things up horribly. Uh, during that race, Roy Clark, uh, you know, like we mentioned, uh, you know, friend of the show has uh there was a race at i uh, raced with him at circus gilles villeneuve uh in the mclaren and you know he was coming up behind me and it's like okay i'm gonna pass you type thing we're going into i don't remember what corner it was it was towards the beginning or it was either the very beginning of the lap or the end of the lap i remember the corner i just don't remember what number it is um and like as as he came up on me i just completely biffed it into the you know into the dirt for no reason other than the fact that you know my own me being me kind of thing, you know, and during this race, Roy unfortunately had a little bit of problems. So he ended up uh, coming out of the pits just in front of me. And, you know, it's like, oh, okay, this is weird. You know, and then I looked at it, you know, I expected his number to be red, you know, on the relative screen, you know, I'm racing behind him. And then I look, it's like, wait, why are you for position? You know, and he had a little accident his, you know, his car was a little messed up. So, but I, he didn't let me by per se. It's like, so we raced and then we got to a point where, you know, I was I got out of the last corner way faster, came up, and didn't and in my, <laughs> I know he's a better racer than me, so in my mind, I didn't want to pass him. Like that's how I I race type thing. But it's like, no, you got out of that corner, and I just went for it and went right by him, and didn't didn't let off, and then ended up in a situation where, you know, we're going you know I'm just past him. We're going to turn one, and then hit my marks into turn one and didn't go flying off the track even though he was right behind me i knew he was just about as fast as me i was just slightly faster and i and that moment just i was so happy like i got on the, i got on the the uh the mic with and said hey roy i did i didn't mess up as soon as i got in front of you like last time and he remembered that too but it yeah. was uh but i was so proud of that because i mean like you know what i made the pass i didn't back off and then i hit my marks on the next corner and, like, I was so happy about that. <laughs> yeah, and I actually uh, went back and watched your stream, and I heard you say that. And, I, you know, I remember, I don't know if I remember watching it, but I remember you telling us that, mm. you know, how you wrecked it right after you'd been around him. So, yeah, I, there's, there were a lot of things that I noticed in you that, that were pretty impressive in that race. I mean, you did, you did a good job, and you got a finish that, I think you were rewarded with very nicely with because you had done a lot of things really well. And considering that you had raced in a while, that was pretty impressive in my eyes. And my first race in that car that I bought this after that afternoon. Yeah. You know how we tell you guys not to buy something and then four hours later race it? Well. Sometimes it's okay. <laughs> uh, Sometimes it works out. But, you know, it, and... And there was two two more factors, you know, one, how I finished, and two, how I reacted to that situation as well. And um, and Chad, you know, after, after we were done, Chad mentioned it, and then, you know, watching my stream later, Chad <laughs> mentioned it again, in the fact that, and we talked about it just last show, I mean, it was a few weeks ago now, but, uh, you know, yeah. how we stream differently. You know, I feel the need to entertain and talk and chat and, you know, be the person who's giving you most of what, you know, giving you that entertainment value as opposed to the driving value. And, and Chad comes on and 
It's like, this is the quietest I've ever heard Trevor be during a stream ever. Because I was so focused on keeping that car underneath me. And, like, and, and during the stream, like, I apologized a couple times. Like, I'm sorry I'm not being entertaining, but it is taking everything I have just to keep this to car under control. So, I mean, like, I just went into serious focus mode. And it was so cool because I never do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, when the race was actually happening, I think there was, like, seven or eight laps to go. And I literally had the thought, is Trevor still alive? <laughs> because, like, I literally, like, because I, the last time that Trevor spoke to me through TeamSpeak was after, when I had come up to pass him. Because I, I had come up not too long after pissed off to, to put him a lap down, but I wasn't in the lead. Hmm. But, and he said, you know, I'm going to stay to the right. And I said, I'll pass to the left, you know. And then I said, thanks. And he probably said, like, yeah, or something like that. And then he said, like, one other thing. And that was on, like, lap 17, maybe, or 18, the 30-lap race. I did not hear from Trevor until, like, three minutes after the checkered flag from that point on. And, like, I literally had that thought through the race. I was like, why hasn't Trevor said anything? Like, I really kind of wondered it. But then I just immediately went back to focusing on my race. But, you know, I, I really had that thought. And there was another part of me that at the same time I thought that, you know, is he still alive? Which, obviously, I was kind of kidding about because I knew he was. But there was that moment where I kind of thought, man, he must be either having the worst time of his <laughs> life and he's just ready to be out of here, but he's not saying anything because he's trying to be nice, you know, and he's trying to respect, you know, my race, which was going pretty well. Or... He's having the most fun in his life, and he is focused. And, of course, it ended up being the second one. Hmm. So, and, um, and, and and I wasn't even really paying attention to my positioning. Actually, Roy was paying more attention to my positioning than I was. And that was, one of the, that was when Chad kind of knew things were going okay, because Roy piped in and just said, you know, hey, Trevor, you know, one more spot, you know, and you're in the top ten. You know, and this was pretty late in the race. And, you know, it's like, really? And I looked and I was like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that was what, you know, Chad all of a sudden is like, wait, he's there? Oh. So. Uh, well, and at that moment when Roy said that, I kind of struggled to hear what Roy said. Not because, you know, he talks weird, but he just. He kinda, <laughs> because he talks weird. Well, he kind of said it quickly, but then also it, his mic kind of cut off before he finished so and I was in the middle of like a turn and was really you know focused on what I was doing so I was kind of listening but kind of not listening but I heard something like the word I heard 10 come out of his mouth and I knew that he was talking to you and so for a quick second yeah and I, like I mentioned I don't run the F3 so I have no clue where anybody is like I never know who's racing with me where anybody is in positions I had no idea where Trevor was he could have been in first he could have been in 23rd I'd have never known and unless he was telling me, you know, hey, I'm currently running in X, Y, Z position. And so when he said that, I kind of thought, well, it kind of sounds like maybe Trevor might be battling for a top 10. But I didn't really think anything about it because I didn't really hear him. And then after the race was over with, I was looking at my results. And then I'll let you take over. Yeah. And then uh, in the end, I <laughs> ended up finishing in 10th position. I mean... Out of 23 cars started, I finished 22nd. Now, mind you, a lot of that was attrition and you whatnot. You started 22nd. Yeah, started 22nd, sorry. Um, but, you know, some of that was attrition and stuff like that, and, you know, and some of it was a passing okay. through pits and stuff like that. But it was, um, yeah, like, you know, I and ended up finishing with a legitimate top 10 in a road race in a pretty dang tough car to drive. And that you earned, too. Yeah, I know that some of it was attrition. But you still drove. Like, you drove. Like, you can tell if you guys watch a stream the last 10 laps or whatever, where he keeps apologizing, you know, for not talking. <laughs> you could tell that he was focusing on trying to do well. And he, I mean, he was trying to focus so he didn't screw up, but he was trying to focus so they could do well. And that was kind of neat to see because usually you're just kind of sitting there chatty, chatty box. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, these cars, like, they, like, it seriously, it was like the hardest I think I've ever driven in a road course, you know, even, you know, the slight mess ups and whatnot. But I mean, that's, 
like I drove hard because I had to because that car is a handful. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it was fun. <laughs> it is. It's a blast to drive. Um, now I won't go into details with my race, but it it was a good race for me. Um, I ran pretty well. Kind of good pit stop. Uh, the only thing that was not good is that on lap three, uh, Roy, um, Roy, there's Roy again, just everywhere today. Well, you know, and last time we talked when we talked about a bunch too. Like when when Roy <laughs> when Roy's part of the show, he's like part he's of all the show, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like from the beginning to the end. Um, but he, I don't know, like if he saw this on his end, but on my screen, he kind of went off the road and. and Kind of dug up, no, well, not dug up, but kind of made some dirt fly. So I, in the turn, and I was like right behind him, and I kind of went a little bit more to the left to possibly avoid him spinning because I didn't know what was going to happen. And he seemed to have everything under control, but you never know. Sometimes you got everything under control, and then suddenly you're spinning. <laughs> and suddenly um, you don't. <laughs> yeah, especially in that car. So I kind of just as a precaution moved a little bit further to the left, and when I did, I got on the throttle, and... I was kind of on that curve, almost in the grass, but kind of on that curve there, and it shot me around. It scared me to death. And, like, if you watch the stream, I literally was like, holy crap, <laughs> because I was like, I didn't want to do this. And I just went and hit, I locked it down, like, as quick as I could, pushed the brake pedal in hard, because, you know, obviously I didn't want to crash out a lap three of a race that I was very well prepared for. Um, and... Hit the wall a little bit, but it was only 26 seconds, which I then got down to 14 on my pit stop. Uh, it did hurt my lap times uh, before the pit stop uh, by a decent number. I was running 14, 2 minutes, 14 seconds. But my <clears throat> no damaged lap times were about 2 minutes and 12 seconds, or 2.13 at the worst. So it did hurt me. But after I got about 12 seconds done, the car was better. It was still not the best that it could be, but it was better. Uh, and it wasn't hard to drive. Um, but I ran in the top eight pretty much the entire race, except for the pit stops, which I think I still actually came back out in eighth, now that I think about it. Um, and ended up not really in a battle, but kind of in a race against time to catch the guy that was ahead of me. Um, and he actually said, you know, a couple of times after the race and then uh, in the forums, actually, you know, he said he was pretty stressed out about me being behind him because I was catching him. When I came out of the pits, I was six seconds behind him. At the checker flag, I was three seconds behind him. But the closest that I ever got to him was a second and a half, uh, which was in the last five laps or so. And then he just started getting me a little bit better in the carousel. Uh, he seemed to be better than me in that turn. I, I seemed to be better than him in most of the other turns, but he really got me there. And um, I probably also abused my tires too much and ended up finishing about three seconds behind him. But the thing that I took away from that is that, you know, I don't know if that was his first race or his 15th race in the V8, but regardless, he had a car number two, I'm pretty sure. So, and my car number was, I don't even remember what my car number was. Your car, seven, number, I think. Your car number was seven, he was two. Yeah, okay. So, he has a better I rating than me. Now, how much, I don't know, but he had a better I rating. So in my mind, I kind of took it as a positive and as a confidence booster that, hey, I ran him down for the most part, didn't quite get there, and didn't ever actually have an opportunity to pass him. But I did, for the, I mean, I gained a lot of time. I mean, six seconds to one and a half, and then it finished at three, which was really, really in just the last couple of laps where that happened. Um, it gave me some confidence, you know, that I was doing well. And I am putting a good amount of practice in, to the series because I'm trying to do well. So it's been good to start off, you know, with a fifth, and then at, I don't think I ever said where I finished at some point, but I, I finished in either seventh or eighth. I don't really remember. In which race? Um, this one here, like we're talking about? Or the, no, the summit point. The okay, one sorry. I, I, yeah, I missed it. You said that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but so I got a fifth and then like an eighth or a seventh there. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was eighth. And then uh, at Road America, ended up getting in fifth. So to have three starts in a car that I'd never driven before and have two of them be fifths, um, I'm pretty dang happy with. And I've been doing well. And, you know, I'm not bragging or anything, but, you know, it, it's been, it's it's made me enjoy it even that much more because, you know, it's not like, hey, I'm just doing this, but I kind of suck. You know, I'm, I'm doing it and I'm actually doing well. Hmm. So, um, like Trevor said, 
those races are Friday nights at 9.15, and tomorrow night is Olton Park, which I haven't actually practiced for yet because it's been kind of a weird week with being sick and stuff. Um, but I'm going to get on early tomorrow night and get a lot of practice in. Um, so I'm looking forward to that because, like I said, I've just been having a blast in the car. Um, and the first three races have been different. It was a lot of throttle control, not a bunch of heavy braking zones at Olten, or at Oren Park. At some point, it was kind of both, where there was some heavy braking zones, but a lot of throttle control too. And then at Road America, I think it was more of heavy braking zones than it was throttle control. There's a whole lot of long straightaways at Road America. So each race has been different and has kind of given a unique challenge to the way you have to drive the car. And it's been fun, so I'm looking forward to getting out there on Olton Park. Yeah, and uh, while I'm going, to, I have done, actually done some practice at Olton uh, Park already, uh, and I will get a race in this week. It won't be the strength of field race tomorrow night because, you know, for because of family reasons, I will not be available to race at 7.15 my time uh, tomorrow night. Uh, but I might get in at the 9.15 if it becomes an official. <laughs> not sure. Um, so I'm hoping to get in tomorrow night and get the race in. Uh, or Saturday, Sunday, depending on, you know, family schedule. But uh, I have already practiced there. Of, you know, I can get around the track. That, that track is weird. As a side note. That's like, fun. There are a lot of elevation changes in that track. And, like, a lot of elevations, then blind corner, then. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's a challenging course. Uh, but, you know. But it's also a course that in the videos that I've watched with the V8, it seems like, you carry a lot of speed. You do, and um, you know, and we haven't mentioned uh, Roy Clark for the last five minutes. So uh, Roy <laughs> actually gave me some really good advice that helped, uh, and the fact that a lot of times when I was coming over the hills, because there's a few pretty substantial hills that you come up on uh, on the crest of, and you're not perfectly straight. Um, but he gave me some good advice about uh, making sure that I short shift on the way up those hills so that the, I didn't get that bit of tire spin at the top of the hill as the car unsettled itself. Cause I, I was spinning out a lot at the top of those hills, but being in a higher gear than I think I need to be, the wheels are obviously spinning slower when you get to the there. So you, I didn't get that little jump at the top of the hills and that, that helped me uh, stay on track as well. So, yeah, but uh, I mean, it, I guess to finish up on, on, on the race, uh, like I said, you know, I had a great race. I was so happy about that. Chad had a great race. He was happy about that, but, also, the fact that we were racing with Danny and Roy, and they both had pretty good races. Roy had a bit of a problem, but he still finished 11th, you know, and uh, Danny had a good race, and he finished in 7th position. So, you know. Which, FYI about that, mm. that was Danny's first race as well. Yes, it was, and he'd, he'd actually mentioned, like, he actually, oh, uh, side note to that, he would actually jumped in when he saw us practicing. That's why you need to be friends with us on the iRacing site, because you can say, hey, Chad and, and Trevor are in a session. I'll go jump in and say hi. So he did. Yeah. And we talked to him and, you know, and he raced and he was, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm kind of nervous about jumping in. And he actually said to me, uh, I think it was through Twitter, um, mm -hmm. you know. He told me in person and then he told you later on Twitter. Yeah, that, you know, he basically said, you know, it's like, you know what, if Trevor was, you know, is brave enough to jump into that race after, you know, that's, you know, just get in the car and whatnot, then he can, <laughs> if he's going to do it, well, I'm going to do it too. And he jumped yeah. in and had an awesome race. So, yeah. you know, it was great for Danny, you know, to see that as well. So, but. Yeah, yeah was, and again, like. <laughs> feel feel good story of the year. <laughs> yeah, we've just started the year. Uh, for me, it was, you know, like, I had no clue where any of you guys had finished. And then when I got out and started looking at the results, it was like, I, this is literally how it went. I think I was talking to you on TeamSpeak. I was like, dude, you got 10. Nice job. Oh, Roy got 11th. That's still pretty good. You know, I think he, I think I had heard he fenced it or something. That's still pretty good. Danny got seventh. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was just like, it kept getting better. You know, the more we talked about it, you know, the more that I found, you know, the people that we were racing with. So, so yeah, come race with us. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and, and I guess, uh, you know, that's, I guess we'll bring, well, okay. First I will mention my, you know, rookie tip of the week. Uh, we've had two, but, you know, bonus section. <laughs> um, and, and just from my experience, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you get into, you know, what we call, you know, the iRacing funk, where you just don't want to race and whatnot. And I found for me, apparently what I needed was to just have a new experience and to share it with some friends. And that's all it took to all of a sudden, 
remind me as to why I love the, you know, sim racing. So, you know, if you feel like you're, you know, in a rut, try something different, you know, and maybe it might be that thing that just shakes you out and says, hey, well, what about this? This is fun. You were, you know, you were kind of, eh, try something new, you know, try a new car, try a new series, whatever, and, you know, see if that shakes the rust off, shakes, you know, the the doldrums out, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I guess the flip to that was, you know, I took three weeks off, but I wasn't in a iRacing funk. I was just in a, let's just take three weeks off. Hmm. And you can do that too. You know, it, you don't, you don't need a reason per se to just take some time off from racing, except just to say, you know what, I'm just going to take some time off. And I did that, took three weeks off, came back, jumped into these, the Skip Barber and the V8, and now I'm having like the most fun that I've had in a long time. Not that I wasn't already having fun, but it's been amplified. Uh, it's funny, you had mentioned at the uh, earlier today that uh, you said, you know what, it's like, man, with all the content we have all of a sudden, you know, it's going to turn into like a two-hour extravaganza. And look, checking the clock, we're at a, an hour and 47 minutes. Yep. So you weren't wrong. But no. hey, we haven't we haven't had a show for two weeks, and a lot happened this week. And we're not even done telling you what happened this week. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll try to be more concise now that we've gotten through all that. Yes. But all of that created all of what we're about to say. Yes. And um, I guess the first part of that was the fact that, uh, you know, one thing that we mentioned about, you know, Chad's setup is um, he has the Z1 um, dashboard thing, which allows him to have extra gauges and stuff. And he puts, you put it on a iPad type thing, don't you? Uh, well, I used to, but then it was messing up with my graphics. So I actually went back and purchased, they sell an actual LCD screen. Oh, and okay. So I actually went back and purchased that, and it's a touch screen and everything. And it sits right here over my button box, which nobody can see. But anyways, it's there. Right. Now, another option of that is the fact that if you have a second monitor, you can just have it over there. I mean, it's nothing mm -hmm. that you're necessarily looking at all the time while you're racing, but I mean, it provides a bunch of information. He's he's brought it up in the past, and it's, you know, it's like, uh, you know, maybe, whatever. And then with my field of view changed, I uh, jumped into a carb cup race. I could see the track so much better. I could see where I was driving so much better. What I could not see was my oil and my water temperatures and said, ah, I kind of get it now. And <laughs> and also in, in, the, in the V8 car, I couldn't see half the dash and whatnot. It's like, oh, wait a second. There's some important information that I might need to know. Um, so I, I loaded the uh, trial of that. It allows you to run the full version for 15 minutes. You can you know do it as many times as you want kind of thing. And once I had it up there, and saw the features of it, you know, it, it changes based on the situation. You know, before the session, it shows you a bunch of stuff about the session. As you start, it automatically changes over, and you can customize all this as well. You know, when you hit pit road, it has a bunch of stuff. Uh, and another, and a side note to that, when we were talking during the race, uh, back to the V8 race, I, we had to pit, but I didn't know how much fuel I needed. And Chad has that, that you know, it shows him, you know, here's how much fuel you've used, how much you need to finish, uh, you know, and ad and all that good stuff. It's like, so I'm talking to Chad. It's like, well, how much fuel do we need? And he was giving me his numbers. It's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That's nowhere near where I am. I don't know why we were so different on fuel usage. I think you had a glitch. I, I've heard people talk before that there's some kind of a fuel glitch that occasionally shows up where you enter a certain amount of fuel in the garage and then you do the race and it, like, for some odd reason, changes it. Hmm. Because if you use exactly what I gave you, you should have had 29.6. Yeah, for and some reason you started with less. I I must have, uh, you know, and I don't even I don't know because I didn't check when I started. I only yeah. checked when it was getting closer to pit. You know, another rookie tip: check your fuel. <laughs> <laughs> so and you know, so I'm asking him. It's like, well, how much fuel do I need to add? And it's like, well, I think this much. And I'm looking. It's like what you're saying makes no sense to me. So I ended up putting in more fuel than I needed. Waited longer on pit road. Maybe I would have had a slightly better finish. Don't know. Well, also if I hadn't spun off the track a couple times, but. You know, but so that was something that he got from this tool. I mean, in the tool, it's not just a straight, oh, okay, well, you know, here's how much fuel you have. I guess it's this much. Like, it actually monitors how much fuel you're using, and it makes calculations and changes yeah, that. And it, it, it calculates it live, so, like, based off what you're doing. And it's not just like, oh, well, 
here, this is probably what is reality, what you're going to need. And it doesn't factor in, you know, like the horsepower or the amount of throttle. Like, it, it does it live. And so, like, it tells you this is how much fuel you have remaining in the car. This is how much fuel that we say that you need to make it to the checkered flag based on what you've already done. Mm -hmm. You know, like, based on your first fuel run or something or what you've done in the first few laps. And then, at, after that, it says, and this, based on those first two things, is what you're going to need to add so that you can make it to the checkered flag. Right. So, you know, that was the first clue of, hmm. And then the fact that I couldn't see some stuff on my dash, it's like, hmm. Then I jumped into a carb cup race and couldn't see my oil or my, uh, uh, my water temperature. It's like, oh, so, uh, like I said, I loaded it up, and it is an awesome piece of software, like, based on everything you can do. And I haven't, didn't even start customizing it. That was just, like, stock, what it did. It's like, oh. So, uh, so I'm now going to be running the Z1 dashboard on my second monitor. So that was the first bit of a, you know, hey, let's make some changes to the way I sim race. I went from, I don't know if I want to race anymore, to I love racing, to now... I need this dashboard so I can get more information while I'm racing. And, and what did I say on Twitter? Um, I'm guessing it was probably along the lines of "It's about time," but you know, I'm. A... No, I said I'm making a sim racer. Oh yes, yeah, right. Actually, I believe what you said was I may or may not be ma <laughs> breaking yeah. news. I may or may not be making a sim racer out of Trevor. Uh, so. So I'm not going to be running the Z1 race and uh, dashboard my my future races. Uh, so that was change number one. <laughs> um, and a good change. And a good change. Uh, I guess You'll let's like it. see. Um, hmm, just wondering if we should go. Uh, well, and you also change your field of view, which you've already mentioned. Right. Uh, and then uh, let's. I guess we should go hardware, and then we'll go to our um, future plans. Uh, yeah. So then all of a sudden, because that the V8 card needs a lot more throttle control and a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more control of your pedals. And we've talked about and, it in the braking. past. And braking. And braking, you know, a lot. We've talked about it in the past. You know, my, I like the DFGT wheel. I have no problem with the wheel itself. The pedals, I know, are kind of crappy. Uh, we talked about um, when Chad did his uh, calibration on his old pedals. Um, a couple, well, you know. A couple shows ago, and he mentioned that he had, was it four four zero nine six was your full um, range. The the main pe the main PC pedals are four thousand and ninety five. The club sports were like twenty three ninety five or something. Now what that means is you know it, they are a, <clears throat> that's the number of discrete positions they can have. I mean obviously you're moving it back and forth not in a step pattern, but it's reading it digitally. So it's there's only you know there's a su certain amount of discrete positions it could be so that allows you you know the bigger the number basically the more throttle control the more brake control you would have so obviously 4095 is way better than you know less you know and even and the club sports which are considered you know very highly in the iris or the sim racing community were 2000 some odd uh, i mentioned i need to check to see what my pedals are when i calibrate them they are 255 which meaning that i only have 255 discrete positions that throttle or that brake could be now when you think about that compared to a 4000 that's a huge difference yeah um you know even the 2000 even to 1000 that's that's a significant i mean and the fact i mean they are plastic you know pedals and the movement isn't the greatest i mean they're okay you know but chad's been mentioning a lot so i thought you know what all of a sudden, he did listen to me on this one. <laughs> now it's like I need, I need to improve this because if I'm going to be driving this car, I need to be better at that stuff because this car is a handful. So I started looking at, well, you know, I looked at actually looked at the club sports. It's like, well, they're expensive, but the fact that I'm in Canada really kills it because the shipping was like almost as well, not almost as much as the pedals, but it it was a big chunk. Like it made them. Too expensive to buy. Um, you know, I looked at some, you know, some other options here and there and whatnot. And then it's like, well, the G27 wheel. It's like that. I know the pedals on that are better. I mean, you know, they're the tops of them are metal. They're it's a it's a better pedal set by a long shot over what I have. It's like, well, I could pick up a G27 wheel. You know, and that's and they're normally 300 bucks Canadian up here. Um, 
a place had them on sale for 250 it's like hmm well maybe i might you know and i just started thinking about changing you know changing the whole set out for 250 it's like well but i really love this wheel and i love the number of buttons on the wheel because the g27 takes that down a lot so it's like well i don't know if i can you know if i want to do that and i don't <coughs> want to buy the g27 just for the pedals and then not use the wheel because that's stupid you know, the yeah. other thing I like is the fact that it actually has legitimate paddle shifters where the DFGT does not. It has those little nubs and with my, you know, I'm a smaller stature man, so I have trouble reaching those sometimes. You know, when I'm racing, because I have to adjust my position on the wheel to actually reach them. You know, and I race a lot of cars where I do the paddle shifters. You know, if it's a big stock car, I shift, shift. And if it's something that needs, you know, that uses paddle shifters, the Indy car turns out the V8. Um... I use the paddles because, I mean, you know, if you're driving NASCAR, you go up to fourth gear and then you stay there until you pit, you know, as opposed to road racing where, you know, you're approaching the corner. And as you're braking, as you're preparing your entrance, you're also shifting down to a specific gear. So that's not you don't want to take your hands off the wheel while you're doing that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm looking at options and whatnot and, uh, you know, talking to Chad, it's like, well, and we had mentioned on the show, you know, he's got the new pedals. He's got a set of G27 pedals there. So, uh, you know, it's like, well, what if you ship me those? And then I can attach them in. And he has the, I don't, I don't know if the D or the N is ahead. I don't know if it's a Bondar or Bodnar. Bondar with the B. Well, I know the B. It's the positioning of the D and the N, which is in question. Is it Bodnar or Bondar? It's B-O-N-D-A-R. Bondar cable which actually increases the, uh, it allows the pedals to be put in um, as a separate USB device and actually increases the resolution of them. So it takes the G27 pedals, which are already better than what I'm using, and takes that 255, because I'm pretty sure the G27s without the cable is still 255, and it changes it to a 1024. You know. And the reason why is because if you don't own a G27, the pedals run through the will, and then the will goes into a USB into your computer. So that like cuts out the pedals because it's going into your steering wheel. Right. So it's almost like you're doing two things on one cord. Right. And that and that's that is it's not that the pedal isn't capable of it, it's the fact yeah. that the, the wheel is the uh, the bottleneck, basically. So he has that cable and he has G twenty seven pedals. So through much effort uh, and uh, confusion as to shipping policies of various uh, establishments. Um, we agreed that, well, it, like I said, it was either go G20, you know, full G27 for the paddles and the pedals, or if it was economically feasible to get them to my country, um, I'd just go with the pedals. And then uh, a, uh, another listener of the show uh, follows us on Twitter, uh, Ben Stock, uh, actually mentioned, it's like, well, rather than going for the, uh, um, you know, for the G27 upgrade, why don't you get, there's a paddle upgrade through a uh, website, uh, Gran Turgismo, not Gran Turismo, uh, that actually has a uh, modification that actually adds paddle shifters to the DFGT. And I've read about it before, and apparently they're they a good quality product, and they work quite well. It's like, so for a fraction of the cost get the paddle shifters on there and then get, you know, and he suggests getting the cable itself just for my, uh, uh, you know, for my pedals. So we're going different step and I'm getting Chad's G27 pedals, which are in the mail as we speak. Um, once that was confirmed, I'm now going to actually order the, uh, the paddle shifters uh, to upgrade my rig a bit. Um, so I will now have new pedals, new shifters. I have the Z1 dashboard. So I went from, Eh, to all of a sudden I've made some fairly significant uh, upgrades to the way I'm going to be doing my racing from now on. Yeah. So it was a um, a weird week <laughs> to go from one extreme to the other. Since last Friday, things and, have yeah. uh, taken and a weird turn. This is this has all happened in six days. It's not like this happened three weeks ago. I mean, yeah. this has been six days. Yep. So that's been uh, my week. So I by next week, hopefully, I'll have um, some of that kit at least. Uh, we obviously, in order for uh, 
to save cost on my behalf, we shipped it as slow as possible. Uh, so it may or may not be here by the time we do the next show. Uh, but by the next one after that, at the very least, obviously. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a uh, heck of a week, man. Heck of a week. <laughs> yeah, it's not over yet. No, it is not. So, um, I guess let's. Uh, we've made some um, made some plans and adjustments as to uh, our racing and the show. Or about yeah, to. surprise time! <laughs> surprise, surprise! I've been talking surprise. for a bunch, so uh, why don't okay, you, do you that want take me to guess? do it? <clears throat> Attention, everyone! Uh, but this is kind of a surprise, probably for most of you. Um, so we've already mentioned that we're doing the V8 car, and we're going to be doing the the strength of field races are on Friday nights. The main reason why I'm doing the strength of field races is because I'm guaranteed that the race will go official. Hmm. Uh, more so than I am for the strength of film, although my I rating is coming up. I'm up to I just today with that skip barber race, I got to fourteen oh six, so I'm getting up there. And and uh, in that V eight race, not only did I do all that stuff, but my for the first time since I've started trying to do better at at uh, road racing, I actually had my I rating and my safety rating go up in that race, which is the first time that's happened since. Well, I don't know since ever. <laughs> Uh, so, <clears throat> that series, uh, now that Trevor has decided that he wants to race it, and obviously I was already racing it, uh, is going to become uh, one of the series that we participate in. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so of course, that's on Friday nights, at least for us. For the most part, um, it will be on Friday nights, or when we yeah. or when we can, if we can't. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so there's that. And, of course, we'll, we'll stream them. Um, the other series that we have both decided to do uh, is one that I have been debating back and forth for quite some time, actually. Uh, I don't think Trevor had ever really debated about it until I brought it up and ruined all of his plans. Um, but it is is a very, 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 very popular series um, that uses a car in a lot of the tracks that we are very familiar with so it's kind of like a no-brainer almost, but it, there's also some things that we discussed that made the series, joining the series, even more of a no-brainer. Uh, and that is the fact that a lot of you guys and gals that listen to our show uh, actually race in this series um, maybe every week, but at least, you know, a good amount of the time. So it uh, brings up the opportunity for us to potentially be on the same track, kind of like we, what we were last week at Road America with Danny and, and Roy. And it allows us to potentially have a more interaction with you guys instead of just, hey, here's a podcast, send us an email. So, um, well, we, we kind of, when I discussed that with Trevor, I think he, um, excuse me, I think he really kind of perked up on the, the whole idea because obviously... As he said earlier in the show, he, he loves, you know, getting to race with you guys. So, <clears throat> man. <laughs> You're uh, going to be okay over there, buddy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He might need to start talking again. Um, so, anywho, I say all that to say that both Trevor and I have decided, and I'm, obviously we might not make every single race, but I, I'm, I'm committing to it full-time. Trevor's committing to it full-time with the exception of when he can't be there. Yeah. Um, and we are going to be racing in the NASCAR iRacing.com fixed setup series, which, uh, as I said earlier, actually, <laughs> an hour ago, um, it has a uh, strength of field race. On, well, actually, it's only two. It goes off twice a week. It goes on on Thursday and on Sunday. Is it twice? So, I thought it was more often than that. I thought it was well. The three. open series is on Wednesday and Friday, but the fix is only Thursday and Sunday. So, and the Sunday one is like Sunday morning, which I can't do. I'm pretty sure Trevor wouldn't do, even if he could. So Thursday night is kind of like the perfect night, with the exception that that's when we do the show. Yes. So it be kind of came this thing. Hey, we want to do this series, but wait a minute. That's when we do the show. We have to move the show. So, 
As a result, we are moving the show. We're not canceling it. We're not going to stop doing it. We're not just going <laughs> to drop it. We are just moving it to a different night uh, for our record night, uh, which most of you don't totally get to listen to us live. Anyway, so you, you listen to the podcast more. Um, but we are going to, not quite yet, because the NIS series doesn't start for, uh, I don't know how many weeks, but a few weeks. We have like Probably a month. Six weeks, give or take, because it's like end of February. It's 20, well, I don't know the exact, but whatever the Daytona 500 is. <laughs> yeah, it's like the middle of February, end of February. Yeah. Um, so for a while, we'll still be doing it on Thursday. But once that kind of starts coming around, uh, maybe the week before or something, we'll, we're going to move to Tuesday nights uh, f to record the show. And then 